Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches. And in this video, I thought I would share with you the top five things that I feel like I need to have around when I'm crocheting, more crocheting slash knitting. Um, in this video, there'll be, not only will I show you the, the five things, <laughs> I'll have a few varieties so that um, you can see there's different options. And then also I'll try to link as many of the things in the description box below to an Amazon affiliate link in case you are interested in purchasing them. Or if I can't find an Amazon link, maybe a, wherever I can find um, like Hobby Lobby or Walmart, we'll see. So there should be links in the description below to many of these items. Okay. I'm also gonna start with the kind of least important, but still important, down to the number one thing. Um, more so be four things <laughs> that are in kind of a random order, to be fair. Okay, let's get okay, started. So the number five thing that I'm gonna show you that I feel like I need for crocheting and knitting, although I do think you could get by without, is some kind of yarn winder. Now, the first reason that I bought one was because after using some yarn, a skein of yarn, and if I didn't use it all, the skein was floppy and kind of like hanging out. It's, <laughs> it's starter end and I like things to look neat and tidy. So I bought one of these little yarn winders from Yarnology. Um, and this is really good for taking like a regular three to 400 yard skein a partial skein and making little cakes. Um, and that's a nice way to store your yarn if after you've done a project and you have a little bit left. Um, so that was the first reason I bought this. Then as I got a little bit more into yarn and learning to crochet and knit, I found these beautiful things called hanks of yarn. And I started to um, experience or learn more about wool and superash merino and hand dyed yarns. And that's when I kind of moved from this Yarnology yarn winder to the big Stanwood. This is almost a must have in my mind. So um, the way that Hanks come, I wonder if I can quick reach over here and grab one for you. They're not ready to use, okay? You need to get them from this twisty look to a cake, right? And this one has fallen apart. So I, I found that the Stanwood for me in the lines of the yarn, um, the first step into the yarn ballers or yarn cakers or yarn winders is a very sturdy product. It's very well made. It's very sturdy. Um, it, it was reasonable. It wasn't more than $60. Now, I don't know how much it is now. I will link in the description both of these items, one from Hobby Lobby and this. When I bought it, it was like in the $60 category, I feel like, maybe $70. Um, and I just really like it. I feel like you have a better chance of making bigger balls. It rarely gets caught up. It has smooth grinding gears, if you can see, smooth gears. And I just very, I just feel like it was a much better product. Now, in defense of this little Yarnology guy here, he is $30. In fact, I have a video where I review this and some people get really mad because there's a lot of people that love this little guy. Um, and I'm actually putting this in a pile for a yard sale. <laughs> okay, but in turn with this fifth item, if you will, a yarn winder, um, especially if you're gonna go to the Hanks, the companion piece to this, which you might need if you start exploring the world of expensive yarn and cakes, is a um, Swift. This is a nitpick Swift. I received this for a present. I'm not 100% sure right now how much it costs. I will link in the description to nitpicks and Amazon. And this is a tool that you open up like this. You open up, you untwist your cape or your yarn and you put it on this and this spins around while you're wrapping up your yarn into a cake. I actually have a video on this as well, which I will link in the description. 
Um, and so you can buy this off of Amazon or nitpicks and you can go, you know, as cheap or as fancy as you want. So the fifth thing that I have in this list is some kind of yarn winder, especially if you're gonna be purchasing hanks. Of course, you don't have to get one of these. You can have somebody stand there with their hands out while they're holding your untwisted hank and you're winding, maybe give them a treat. Um, that's cheaper than buying the yarn winder, but that, that is my number five thing. And like I said, in the description box below, for it, I'll list these in the order that I'm talking about. I'll have the Yarnology yarn winder, the Stanwood yarn winder, the Swift that goes with. Um, also, side note, I bought this off of Amazon, and this is just a little bag that holds my Swift. The reason I have that is because I found that my Swift was expensive, and I didn't want anything to like, pull at or break these little wooden slats. <clears throat> and so I thought it would be nice just to have it a nice protection, but I suppose I could have kept it in the original box. Okay, so that's my number five thing. Okay, I'm gonna get ready for number four. Okay, so the number four thing that I have on my list of a must have for a crocheter or a knitter is some kind of yarn bowl, yarn ho holder. Now I'm gonna show you a couple that you can buy online and then I'm gonna show you most likely kind of a free one, okay? So one thing that I have, my husband bought me for Christmas is this bag and I open it up and I can keep my yarn in here. Right now it's something I'm making with my yarn. The yarn's in there. And there's these little holes in the slot and you stick the end of your yarn out through it and your yarn stays in here. Now the really nice thing about this, like I said, is I then take my item, I stick it in here and it holds the thing I'm making and the skeins of yarn. And this has four holes. So you can have up to four skeins of yarn coming out of this sucker. Um, obviously yarn bowls. I bought this one off of Amazon just because it's cute. Um, you can get them at Knit Picks. You can just get them at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you could get them at Michael's or any other craft store or a yarn shop. Um, this one even broke. One of my daughter's friends dropped it or knocked it over and my husband re put it back together. The horn came off. Um, so a yarn bowl. Um, this I bought at Joann's. It's a little canister. You drop your yarn in it and it comes out this hole right here. You close it up and then you can kind of like carry it around. This works for a pretty sizable cake or ball, um, but uh, in those big long red hearts or big twists or Karens don't usually fit in here. Maybe a red heart with love would fit in here. Um, I want to say this was $9. You can find yarn bowls, sorry, backtrack a little bit. Um, about $20, 20 to $50, depending on how fancy the yarn bowl. And this bag, I don't know off the top of my head how much it is, but under fourth item in the description, I'll list these things. And if I can find one on Amazon, I'm going to guess it's more than 30 because it's a bag. There's, of course, other features to that bag, but that's one of the big ones. Um, and here is your free option for a yarn bowl. This I got from idea I got from one of my knitting buddies. Um, you can take any kind of jar or a bowl, like a regular mixing bowl or serving bowl or an empty Cool Whip container. Take one of these like binder clips. You can buy a pack of these at Walmart. Stick it on the edge of your type of bowl or a container that you're using. I'm using a glass jar. Um, I bought this from Target like 15 years ago. Put your thing, your ball in there, and then um, you can run your yarn out this uh, binder clip thing. Do you see that? And this is a fairly free way, because I'm sure you have some kind of bowl. You can even use a regular cereal bowl or something at home already for this. You don't have to. This is the only thing I think you would have to buy. Um, so the reason I like these is because if you are crocheting or knitting and you put your yarn on the floor, um, it's a good chance that somebody will kick it or get caught in it. I can't tell you how many times my children or husband have walked between where my yarn ball has rolled off to and now they're dragging my yarn through the house. 
Also, if you have pets, it's nice to have kind of a deeper jar and have your yarn in here. So it'll be, um, they'll be least likely to snatch it out. Okay, so def definitely you could go as fancy as you want with $40 or $50, or you can put something together like this for yourself. So that's my fourth um, item, some kind of yarn holder, yarn bowl, yarn container. The third item that I have is um, some kind of little post-it or paper marker. Um, these I bought in a set of three. I want to say they were teal, I think at Walmart. And these are Avery brand. And um, they're little plastic tabs. And I pull them off and I use them to mark places in my patterns. Um, also, I have received this from a subscriber, I believe. It has a whole bunch of these little plastic. These ones are like little plastic ones that you kind of see through. And what I use these for are all kinds of ways to mark up patterns. So for example, if I am working on this pattern, I'm gonna pull it out here. Ooh, I think I might actually even have one on this pattern already. I do indeed. Um, I put this little pink one right over that spot to know I stopped on row eight. And it's nice because I can still see it and I mark it down. Or if you're doing something of a repeat where it says repeat um, rows four through eight, I would take one of these, put this on row four to show that my repeat of the pattern starts here. And then I'd put one on eight to show that's where it ends. So you can buy these at any stationary store, you know, Walmart in the stationary section, you could go fancy to Staples. I'm sure there'll be some kind of thing on Amazon I can find to link. And I will tell you that now they even sell them at Hobby Lobby in the back section over by the crafting. Um, I've gotten a few in the mail from Crochet Society in a subscription box. I was wondering if I could find one off the... I can't. But there are plenty. Or you could just go buy yourself a post-it, cut it, and use it. I guess you could write on your pattern. I like to use this because it, it, I don't know, I don't have to write on it. I just put that little post-it. And I also like these see-through ones because let's say here, I'll see if show you a part. Um, when it has a repeat, so it says double crochet in the first four and then there's my star to show where my repeat is. If I put this little post-it, see-through post-it, right where it starts my repeat if you have a lot of things that you have to do let's say they want you to do three double crochets skip one three double crochets two and one stitch skip one and then they want you to start the repeat over again it gets kind of long if you put this over the part that you're repeating your eyes will go right to it and it'll be kind of you know pull it out for you i don't know hmm. that's what my number three item is some kind of like post-it or marker thing. There's plenty of options for this. Okay, so my number two item that I feel like you need, and you probably don't need it right away, is some kind of hook organizer or holder. Um, I know that when I first started, I had just one of these like little zipper bags and I put the hooks that I got off of Amazon in here and I carried it around. But as my hook collection grew, so did the type of yarn or hook holders that I have acquired. Um, one of the things I have is like this little zipper pouch. I really like this. It has a slot for all my hooks. These are like my leftover hooks, I guess. If I'm teaching someone how to crochet, I usually give them one of these. And also, um, it has like notions packs where you can keep, you know, different things that you would need to help like measuring tape, stitch marker, stitch counter, needle. Okay, so one of these is a really nice option. This is actually made for hooks. I'll put a link in the description. This was actually given to me. Um, so it's kind of a sponsored item from Amazon and I reviewed it and um, they gave it to me for free. But if you don't want something like that, you can go to the school supply section. This is actually a pencil or a kid's school supply case. And instead of putting pencils in here, I put my hooks. Now I will tell you with um, 
over time. I have gotten a little rough with this and some of these uh, things have broken. Um, these are mostly all my Clover Amore hooks. This one guy got in there. These are Clover hooks, more Clover hooks. This is my biggest Clover hook. And again, more notions. So my hooks are on the front part and then I have room to keep all the bits and bobs, <laughs> all the notions, all the little things that you need. Stitch counter, stitch markers, stitch counters, measuring tapes, darning needles, little scissors. So that is one type of hook storage. You could also use a hook roll. Um, this is one that I got from Bella Coco in one of the subscription boxes. And these are all Bella Coco hooks. I only put her hooks in her roll. Um, you could also make your own roll. So if you're not interested in buying one of these, you could crochet one or sew one. Wouldn't that be nice? So then that would be kind of reasonable. Um, I'm sure I could find some kind of hook roll on Amazon, but the two that I have did come from a crochet society box. Um, another kind came with uh, these hooks. These are tulip hooks. This is my, these are tied with my favorite kind of hooks, the crochet, Clover Amores. And this came in this handy little hook pack. So I put them all in there. I have room for some notions right here. And then I fold it up, snap it up. And I throw this little kind of like a hook roll in my crochet bag. And then I have every hook size available. Another type of hook storage, which I just got, is uh, this handy little thing. I got this at Home Goods. It is originally for a desk to hold pencils. Yeah, these hooks are all just random hooks that I have. Um, they don't go. In, they're not Bella Cocos. They don't go in my hook roll. They're not a tulip, so they don't go in the tulip container. They're not in that purple one because they're not Clover Amores. I don't just want to give these out because I love them. So this was ten dollars at Home Goods. I like it because it spins and it looks cute on my desk. So I put the hooks in there. See, it doesn't look doesn't look adorable. And then one more kind of hook storage, if you would like. This is a Bella Coco item. This was part of her range, which I think is a UK term to, or a British or European tour term to describe a group of things that you could buy. So I'll put a link in the description to um, about Crochet Society and this range. Now, the whole thing came as like a, a, a bag with another bag in it. And then you could buy um, hooks, and one of the options of the things that you could buy that went with this set is this like little hook storage. In here, you can see there's like these little rubbery flower looking things. And you just stand your hook up in here. These are polymer clay hooks that I have purchased from people, uh, Etsy shops. These actually are two Bella Coco hooks I just stuck in there for right now. I will look through my old uh, videos and see if I can find a link because I ordered this from a gal and she made me three of them and I put them in here. So here's the purple one. I actually made a video where I opened them and I don't remember who. And then I ordered these beautiful hooks from a gal, I wanna say in like Denmark, Sweden or Norway, I can't remember. And it was an Etsy shop, so I'll look through. And she makes these very beautiful ones. This one has ladybugs on them. And this one has little strawberries. Aren't they beautiful? Again, I had a video where I opened them up. So um, I'll put in, in the link for this number, I think, is this item two or three? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, hook holders. Um, I will link the Bella Coco range. I'll see what I can find on Amazon for the hook holders. And then also under this, I will link the two gals that made these their Etsy shops in case you're interested in, in purchasing um, some beautiful handmade hooks. All right, on to the All next right, item. Here is the number one thing that I think you need besides a crochet hook and yarn to help you crochet are stitch markers. Yeah, um, I used to think that I was smart enough to just keep counting in my head and um, not need a stitch marker, but I have come to the fact that I need them no matter what. 
Now, the first kind of stitch marker I had were, where did they go? I might be able to lost them. Oh, here they are. These like little plastic ones. They came in uh, the Amazon. When I ordered um, my first set of hooks, they were ergonomic hooks, just a regular cheap package off of Amazon for $9. Since then, the handles of them have fallen off and worn off. I don't recommend them. But I mean, it's nice to start with. If you're not sure, you're gonna love crochet. But they came with some notions, some little plastic needles and some little plastic hooks or stitch markers. And this is what they look like. And you open them up and you can use them to mark your stitches. You can use these to mark your last, your, like your placeholder in crochet. You In knitting, you keep all your loops, your stitches on a needle, but in crochet, you only have that one. And if you want to take your hook out and use it for something else, you can put this little this little guy in that last stitch, close it up, and it won't unravel, it won't come apart while it's hanging out in your bag. Um, but then, as you know, there are all kinds of different kinds of stitch markers. Um, these ones are from Bella Coco, and, um, oh, I was gonna say, these ones I think work for knitting and crochet. They come in all kinds of different sizes, so you can slide them on the knitting needle and hang them because you can mark stitches and repeats by hanging them on knitting needles. Or if like when I'm making my hat every eight stitches for my decrease, I mark with a stitch marker. Um, so they work with crochet and knit. These, these stitch markers are Bella Coco type ones and they have this kind of latch on them. These I don't recommend for knitting. And here you just hook this around your loop or around your stitch and they close in and you can use them. Another way that people use these rather than just marking their stitch or the section of a repeat is they'll use it as like a progress keeper and they'll hook it on their last row, if you will. And as they're going, it kind of gives them some inspiration or how much they go and it just kind of gives them an idea. Um, the thing that I like stitch markers for is to, especially when you're new, is to put them in your turning chain. When you are finishing a row and it says chain two and turn or turn and chain two, I like to mark that chain two or three or one, depending on the pattern, it will tell you how many, because sometimes that chain um, can get lost and you need to crochet back in it as a stitch. A lot of times it counts as, as a stitch. It also will tell you in the pattern. Chain two counts as a stitch or chain two doesn't count. So when it counts as a stitch and I chain two, I snatch a little stitch marker on it so that I don't forget it. So when I'm coming back across on the other pass, I know that I need to put a double crochet or a half double crochet in the top of that chain two. Okay, so these are all ones that you can purchase. I've also had many people making their own um, stitch markers. These ones are really cute. Um, they've been made for me and given to me as a gift. And the person who made them put a little alphabet on there, a letter, to so I can put this in my work and show um, what hook I used. So this is a G, and if I was making something with a G hook, when I was done, I would take this and maybe put this on my live stitch. And then I would know when I pulled it out that I needed to get grab my G hook. Also, I really love these kind of latches for, these are earring holders, and these are some of my favorite for stitch markers. And um, I like them because I also, when I'm knitting my hats, this size fits on the needles that I use for my hats, which I think is a size eight, US eight. And so I can use them for knitting and I can use them for crocheting and they close up nicely. So there are all kinds of stitch markers and you could even go super cheap and just use a paper clip. I have done that where I couldn't find anything and I didn't have one in my bag and I just, you know, put a, a, a paper clip on the end. I just pulled it through. So there's all kinds of stitch markers you could use. You can make your own, you can use a free paper clip, you can get one of these cute little plastic sets that are usually very reasonable, very cheap. Um, you can also order stitch markers off of Etsy. 
Um, one of my favorite, I like watching her videos, I like buying her project bags, is Tea Doddles. And she also makes stitch markers and sells them in her Etsy shop. So for the number one thing I feel like everyone should use is a stitch marker, no matter what. Whether you're marking, like if you're chaining and your chain, your beginning pattern says 150 chains, I put one on every 50. That way, if I miscount and I lose count, I know that if I have two stitch markers that I have at least 100 stitches, and then I can pull back to recount to that 100 or if you're marking your turning chain, or if you're using it as a progress keeper, or if you're using it to divide where you need to do your decreases. Stitch markers are important. For amigurumi, it marks the beginning of each round because amigurumi generally is done in a spiral, and you need to know where that beginning stitch is because you're not gonna see it when you're going around. So those, this is my <laughs> top five video. Like I said, if you made it all the way to the number one thing that you'll need, in the description, I will put each of the five things, what they are, and then I will list a few different varieties that you may want to go and get, whether they're from Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Amazon. I'll see what links I can find to pop in there. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this video fun. Also, under each of those, if I have a video that talks about those kind of things, like for the yarn winder, I have a video and I believe for the yarn holder, I might, I might pop those videos in there as well. So thanks for liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and sharing my videos. And until the next video, happy crafting. Bye.